Everybody, how's it going? Welcome back. I hope you're having a good day. It's me, the fastest YouTuber in an eight mile radius. I'm getting closer. Welcome back. Today I'm doing something that people have asked me to do for a long time. Today I'm ranking every single Zelda game that I've ever played. Not in a tier list, because if it was a tier list, it, they'd all be S tier. I like all of these games, okay? Some I like more than others, and I'm gonna put that into a proper order right now. But before the video begins, I just want you to know that, like, this is my opinion. You're allowed to disagree with me, you know? You're allowed to be wrong. That's okay. I don't mind. Starting it off strong. I'm not going to tell you the first two immediately, but go for number three. I'm going to put I'm gonna put Skyward Sword at number three. <laughs> and I know that's going to make people mad. I already know. But it's so good, dude. I don't know why this game gets as much, like, hate as I've seen it get. It's so unbelievably good. It has the absolute best version of Link and Zelda. I don't care what you say. Don't, you cannot disagree with me on that. Link and Zelda have so much personality and the relationship is so cute. The way that you can tell that these two characters like really, really care about each other was so cool. Silent Realms, absolutely terrifying. Loved it. I can't think of very many other like experiences or levels in Zelda games that made me feel the way that the Silent Realms did. But the dungeons too, dude, don't even get me started on it. My favorite dungeon in that game gotta be the one on the pirate ship. And the little skipper... You remember this skipper, right? He lives inside of my heart. I love him so much. Throwing that little cat creature off the island, that was fantastic. Oh, and then how could I forget Fee, dude? One of my favorite parts about that game was just playing the uh, the harp and then watching Fee like dance and sing along with you. That <gasps> was so cool. And then the stuff she said at the end broke my heart, dude. <laughs> broke my heart. I miss Fee. Fee is like 80% of why Link was able to do that journey. <laughs> She's the hero of Hyrule, dude. You had this, this fair goblin creature and then like a robot to tell him what to do it was a fantastic dynamic and at the end of it it wasn't like she was just this guide for link anymore she was his friend i miss robot lady i am crying what about it final boss of skyward sword had to have been one of the coolest final bosses in all of the zelda games which could be another video so i'm not going to tell you where i'd rank that number two it was so good it was unbelievable it's like you're fighting like a cement building like he is massive this dude is huge there's lightning everywhere i did it without a shield too i'm pretty sure and my god that fight gets so intense i loved it i loved it so much and then like girahim leading up to it really good as well it's always a good day when you get to slap grilled cheese but I, I love skyward sword so much and people are going to disagree with me on a number three spot i'm pretty sure but that's okay you're like what we said this already but you're allowed to be wrong it's such a good game number three I don't care. I was going to sit down and try and write a script for this video, but I figured it would be fun to just get in my room and talk about these games and just trying to remember it. So the video is probably going to be a little bit messy and all over the place. And my brain, I promise you, is screaming, but I'm doing my best here. But just to make it even more confusing and messy, we're going to skip all the way to number six. And I promise you, it pains me so much to put it there because it's the one from all those older Zelda games that I was like most excited to play. And if you've been on the channel for a while, you know I'm talking about Wind Waker. Man, I, I, I absolutely adore that game. Once again, all fantastic games, S tier, every single one of them. But I think I overhyped the game for myself. I love the story of Wind Waker, how Link is just like a dude and he forced the gods to choose him. Like he wasn't the chosen hero from the beginning. He had to fight for that. And I hope I'm not getting the lore wrong because, oh my God, that's such a <gasps> sick story. Are you kidding me? But the main thing that I was so excited to see about Wind Waker was like, oh, I get to explore everywhere. Like I get to sail around and I enjoyed the aspect of sailing, like going through the ocean with that music, dodging giant octopus, finding all these cool little islands that had little things that art style, man. That game came out like like 2003 or something and it still holds up to this day that art style is phenomenal i heard people didn't like the art style when it came out and that kind of hurts because it's it's beautiful it's so good and it's like timeless wind maker could have came out like last week and it still would look good. I thought it was really cool that late in the game, spoilers, by the way, this video is going to be full of them. Play these games. Oh, hello. <laughs> but, but one of my favorite parts of it, which I thought was super cool, was that you had to take the sages, like Medley and Makar, to their, like, dungeons. But you could just sail around with them in the boat if you wanted to. Makar and I sailed around for so long and did pirate things together. It was fantastic. I, I really like Tetra's character in that game, how she's, like, the leader of a pirate ship. Probably the most interesting version of Zelda 
that I saw. I'm really glad that after the game, she went back to just sailing around with Binkus and the boys. And what other Zelda game has Link's grandmother that gives him soup? Are you kidding me? Character of the year? King of Red Lions, such a good character. And the, the final boss fighting Ganon with Zelda was so cool. And like the puppet before that and everything. So good, dude. I spent a, an unbelievably long amount of time trying to take a selfie with Ganon. It was fantastic. But I put it in sixth place. I think that's a good spot for it. Don't be bad. I'm right. I don't want to hear it. Right below that, in seventh place, Minish Cap. I love that game, dude. Best 2D Zelda game. I've said that about all of them, but I mean it this time. Minish Cap, the absolute best 2D Zelda game. So cool. Small Mega is smaller? Like, what the hell? Game of the year? <laughs> what? I haven't talked about companions at all yet, because we haven't really had any other than Fee, and that's she's just really good. But Ezlo? The little bird hat? I throw him into the sun. I love him so much. He's perfect. He's a little- And I think that's why I like him. You have to remember that I played these games with zero nostalgia at all. And I played Minish Cap first out of all like the older 2D style Zelda games. And it set the bar so incredibly high. Minish Cap did a really good job of like creating this world that I love to explore, but also had no idea how to get anywhere. I was lost for like 90% of that game and I did not know what to do. It was the hardest game for me to figure out in my brain where to go. And I give that like extra points because of that. I like not knowing where I'm going. I like having no idea what to do. Also, Minish Cap for me came with like the really cool villain that I've never really experienced before, that being like Vati. Dude shows up in the first half hour gameplay, turns Zelda to a statue, and then disappears for like almost the rest of the game. I loved it. But hold on, let's talk about art style real quick. The pixel art in Minish Cap goes crazy. If you've been watching the channel for a long time, you know I love pixel art, and Minish Cap's pixel art was absolutely gorgeous. It is one of my favorite art styles, and it absolutely killed it, dude. I hope one day we get another Zelda game with pixel art. Also, Large Goron. Large Goron. I didn't even see him in my playthrough, but I know he exists, and that warms my heart. I'm putting it in seventh place because I think it is one of the best Zelda games, but I did enjoy all of the 3D Zelda games more than, like, the 2D Zelda games. Also, Ting Tong Tong Along Ting Along for Iron, bro. <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. Except it does. Fourth place, Majora's Mask. Now I hear everybody panicking because you're worried about where I'm going to put Ocarina of Time. Don't worry about that. We'll get to it. Majora's Mask. Easy. Easy fourth place. An absolute fever dream of a video game, but that is the Zelda game that made me realize that I loved side quests so much. Hunting for each of those masks and like completing the little quests that I needed to do them. What the hell? Dude, and it felt like the world was existing around me. Like, if Link wasn't there, like, it feels like it would still be going on. You know what I mean? So good. Good villain, Skull Kid. Love him. He's an absolute goblin of a character that I want to throw so incredibly far, but such a good character, dude. The weird horror aspects, like, at the beginning of the game when he got turned into a tree. Ah! Terrifying. Remember when I said not many Zelda experiences have given me the feeling that the Silent Realms did? That entire game, Majora's Mask, felt like Silent Realms to me. <laughs> it's so, so cool. I hated the timer at first, but as the game went on, I grew to love it because it added, like, this aspect of, like, I need to complete this. I need to get it done. So every time I walked into a room with a puzzle, I panicked a little bit. Brain large, but you had a clock that slowly counts down, I freak out. It's like when, like, a wild animal, like, looks in the mirror. That's how my brain feels. It is a fantastic experience. I love that feeling. But the whole vibe to that game was so unique i enjoyed having a little fairy companion again i played it after i played ocarina of time so it was kind of cool to see those same characters but in like a different world and i love the theories that go along with that game let's talk dungeons okay majora's mask didn't have a lot of them but every single dungeon was so unbelievably good even the spider house and like that little mansion you went to where you met all like the skeletons that was <gasps> awesome puzzles felt good nothing was too confusing and it's like an older game so i expect it to like beat the <gasps> out of you intellectually the side quest in that game, man, absolutely my favorite part of it. You could remove the main story from that game and have it just be side quests, and it would be just as good. I loved it. I loved it so much. I would give it a 4 out of, uh, how many, how many? It's 12. 4 out of 12, and that's a good thing. S tier game. S tier in my heart. Wait a second. You know what I just realized? You're halfway through the video, so that probably means you're, like, liking it, right? Why not, you know, leave a subscribe? and or or like anyways bye see you later hope you enjoy the rest of the video i'm sorry i don't know how he keeps getting in here now we'll jump to my least favorite one and you could have probably guessed what it was gonna be this age of calamity now it was tough for me to put it there because age of calamity's story 
was disgustingly good. Seeing all these characters that I absolutely adored again with a different story where they don't perish is fantastic. Seeing Sidon, I'm crying thinking about it. What the f? <gasps> Seeing Sidon show up to save Mifa. Oh my god. And then when Sidon saves smaller Sidon, you know how far I could throw him? Such an interesting take on a story that was already so incredibly good, but they just gave it a happy ending. And my heart is warm. All right, I'm telling you right now, my heart is, it's alarmingly warm. I mean, Rivali and Arbosa and all that's cool too, but it was really like the Mifa storyline that ripped my heart out. <laughs> also, Arbosa? Hello? Wait, what? <laughs> Arbosa? Thank you. I just didn't like the gameplay. It's not my kind of gameplay. I went into that knowing that I don't like hack and slash genre of video games, but I really wanted to experience the story. It was so worth it because every time I beat a mission, it was like, oh, shit, I get more like a story with these characters that I love so much. But I didn't enjoy the gameplay. Also, Egg, game of the year. Now, right above last place, I'm putting Cadence of Hyrule. Rhythm game. Zelda, like everything you love about a Zelda game, but it's a rhythm game. I was just superbly bad at it. <laughs> it was very difficult, but very fun. Very good. Challenging game. The music in that game, obviously, that goes without saying, slapped. The boss fight music for like the four, five large men. It's in my head still to this day. It was hard to get into the groove of how you should play that game. But once you did, once I started like, boom, boom, it was, oh, it's so good. All right, now on to Ocarina of Time. Don't be mad. Don't be mad at me. You're not allowed to be mad, all right? <laughs> Wanna get in, um, uh, fifth, fifth place? You know, right under Major, I think Majora's Mask was better. It just had themes that I enjoyed more, but Ocarina of Time, fifth place. I can see the comments now. You're upset. I, I know, I know. I knew people would be mad about this one, but you know, like I said, you're allowed to be wrong, you know? <laughs> so that's okay. That being said, the Gorons do dance, and my god, they dance incredibly well. Like all the other games on this list, I loved absolutely everything about it. When I first started playing it, I had to get used to those controls, and I did not think I was going to make more than one episode, but by the time I finished making the first video on it, I knew, I knew that I had to stick with the story, because it is so special. The whole thing with Saria breaks my heart. Saria is one of my favorite characters throughout like the entire series. I thought her relationship with Binkus was so cool. So cute. She gave him the ocarina in the beginning of the game and then he sprinted away really fast with his tiny little legs. Dude, the character development he went through throughout that game. Literally, he grew so tall. He was small man, but he became large man. But I think if I went back and played it again, I would enjoy it more. So I do want to do a challenge run of that game eventually. And I do want to do side quests because I think I skipped a lot of them because I just didn't have that mindset until I played Majora's Mask. Something about the uh, the old N64 graphics is so comfy. And that was the first time I saw them in, like ridiculously long so my nostalgia was like peaked even though i never played that game like my nostalgia for that graphic style it just warmed my heart <laughs> every dungeon in that game was 10 out of 10 there wasn't a single dungeon that missed and there were so many dungeons do not get me started on the water temple i loved it so much the absolute coolest boss in any of the zelda games probably my favorite boss out of all of them was the mini boss in the water temple. It felt like I was playing against another player who was just better than me. It was so cool. And when he would jump on the sword and like taunt you, I loved it. I think that's the game that I was also introduced to Redeads. <laughs> and when I tell you they scared me, oh my God, is that an understatement? What a cool enemy. And the dude in the well with the, the, the arms, <laughs> you know the one, terrifying. It was, it's perfect. That being said, uh, fifth place. All right, now back down to 2D video games. And we're going to eighth place right below the Minish Cap and right above Cadence of Hyrule. I'm putting Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening is the most difficult Zelda game I have ever played. When I did it, I made the mistake of playing on hero mode because I've beat Dark Souls. I was not prepared. <laughs> oh my God, I got my <gasps> kicked. Link's Awakening is the first Zelda game I played after playing Breath of the Wild. And it was so interesting how different they were and how much more <gasps> difficult the 2d version was every boss fight in that game it took me more than one try it, like it, oh god <laughs> i'm like i was getting nervous just thinking about it the dungeons destroyed me absolutely tore me to pieces <laughs> It was so difficult. My brain was not ready. It was like every single boss that I fought in Link's Awakening, when I beat it, it was this huge like sigh of relief. I, I had to like get up and walk around, dude. <laughs> the final boss of Link's Awakening? Oh my God. <laughs> 
Oh, oh God, I'm shaking. <laughs> it's so scary. It took so long. I died so many times that I think I went to bed and then came back the next day to beat it. <laughs> It took so long. I'm sweating just thinking about it. But I did really like exploring that world with Link and like meeting up with Marin at like a couple points and like interacting with her. I went from like screaming and running for my life to like sitting on the beach in this calm area and just listening to people speak. But yeah, I put it all, all the way near the bottom <laughs> just because it's a 2D Zelda game. And like I think Minish Cap did the 2D Zelda game formula a little bit better. I still enjoyed it. All right, we're getting close to the end. So I have two games that I'm gonna go through really fast because I haven't really played them that well. Hold on, one I played a lot, but the other one, A Link to the Past. I'd put that probably after Link's Awakening right now, just because I haven't got very far into it at all. So it's probably gonna sit like right here and that's fine. I like it a lot so far. It's going in a really cool direction and it's once again, beating my <gasps> old Zelda game hurt. <laughs> me but, but i really enjoy it i just haven't played it enough to give it like a proper ranking but so far it's like sitting right here which i think is a pretty good spot and then the other one that i'm going to get through really quickly uh tears of the kingdom i love tears of the kingdom that being said one of my favorite parts of zelda games is the exploration i love getting thrown into a new world it was so much more impactful for me when he like left the forest in ocarina of time for the first time and it was this whole new world that he's never seen before because he's been in there his whole life or like in breath of the wild when he woke up at the start of the game and he had amnesia so we had to relearn everybody's names who he was what his goal is like all of that it was so cool because i was experiencing it with him for the first time tears of the kingdom is hard for me to have that feeling because i've seen it all already breath of the wild was so special because it was like holy <gasps> what's over here near like hebra and like not knowing where anything is so when i discovered like sell me's hut i was like oh my god somebody lives up here and it, it's a mini game but i haven't gone there in tears of the kingdom is because it's like oh i, I know sell me's huts over there so it's hard for me to have that feeling of oh my god this is all so new and like fresh to me and i want to explore which is like the main reason why i enjoy these games that being said I have beat the game, but I have not done side quests at all yet, which is now like one of my favorite parts of the game. I have not even explored the depths. It feels bad to rank it right now. So it's going to sit right here for now underneath Skyward Sword, probably. And that's only because I have not really completed the game. I beat it, but I have not completed the game and I plan to play it more. And I promise you, it probably will change because I started side quests recently and I adore them. And Tears of the Kingdom for me, the absolute best final boss in any Zelda game. But holy <gasps> the, uh, uh, spoilers, Spo <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> three two one uh, like two dragons fist fighting in the sky are you kidding me so for now it's gonna sit underneath skyward sword until i uh can make a proper reaction but that being said let's move on to number two twilight princess goblin the number one game on this list you probably could have guessed my favorite game of all time breath of the wild dude Dude, how does it get better than Breath of the Wild? How? The exploration in that game was absolutely incredible. I talked about this a little bit earlier when I was talking about Tears of the Kingdom. But Breath of the Wild for me, these big open spaces, I love to explore. <laughs> there wasn't a ton of stuff in the environment until you looked for it. And then there was a Korok seed every 10 feet. Or there was a shrine. As everywhere I went, there was something to discover. Something new that I've like never seen before. It was really cool to accompany like Link on that journey where he didn't remember anything. He woke up with amnesia and he just kind of had this direction that a ghost sent him on. You just had to believe him and like work towards that goal with him. It was really, really cool experience that I don't think I'll ever have in a video game again. Finding the memories and then like finding and meeting the, the ghost of these like heroes that you fought along with who I had no idea about. I thought Mifa was Zelda when she was talking to me the first time, which now I feel terrible about. But now every time I think of Mifa, I <gasps> cry. The whole story for Breath of the Wild was tragic. I think that's why it hits so hard. Because you knew that they all lost. You knew that all the champions died. But I found myself like hoping every memory that I got like, oh, maybe, maybe something will happen and they'll be okay. You know, it was this story that I was so unbelievably hooked on from the very the beginning. I know people are going to say, well, Breath of the Wild is not a traditional Zelda, and I completely disagree with that, at least for me. The whole thing about Zelda games that I've loved the most was the exploration and exploring this new world. And Breath of the Wild does that better than any game I've ever played. I thought I was going to hate it. I really did not think I was going to enjoy 
Zelda games, but Breath of the Wild completely changed my perspective on them. I really just sat down and talked about Zelda for an hour and a half to myself alone in my, <laughs> in my room. And it, was, it was such a good time. I hope you enjoyed my list. This is it. This is how I feel about every Zelda game that I've played. Do you disagree with me? That's fine. I know people are going to be mad about it because I put Breath of the Wild at number one and Ocarina of Time is like number six. But, you know, it's my opinion. And this is how I, I genuinely feel about these games and how I played them and why I played them and what I enjoyed about them. It's so good. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. My list is right. Uh, you're wrong. Anyways, see you later.